Why, hello there. Welcome to Retsu Talk episode 18. Whoa. Whoa. We, Retsu Talk can vote. We can legally buy cigarettes with this podcast. Oh, but I, in I America. Think in, I think in Alabama that's 19. <laughs> really? I, th- I thought it was. I never knew that. I thought it was like a national thing. It was 18. I mean, I've never smoked because I'm not disgusting human shit. No, so I, yeah. I don't keep up with these smoking laws like some people probably used to do. <laughs> Yeah. How long have you been uh, off off it now? Oh God, I don't even remember now. I used to keep mm-hmm. count, but um, over a year and mm. or two years, even I, I don't. I really I try not to think about it. If you want to know the truth, and because be, then it makes you want to get back into it. And to be fair, I've I've had cigars in the interim, like at cigar bars and things like that with my friends. Yeah. But I think it, cigars are a valid exception. I think if you keep them... I'll, I will admit there was a rough point where I was smoking them a little too frequently, and I just kind of cut that off then, because I kind of realized, you, you know... You chain-smoked cigars? No, 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 no. But, like, it's like... Eh, you Hugh Hefner slow beef. <laughs> no, no, no. I think In the Let's Play Mansion. You know what it is? My, um... One of my family members uh, quit smoking cigarettes but went to cigars, and he has at least, like, two to three a day. And oh, really? And to him, it's like, ah, I quit smoking. It's no big deal. But it's like, well, you just well, about that transitioned over, you know? Um, I had to learn to smoke cigars for a play I was in. Well, is and, there a lot of learning involved? Well, don't you have to, like, you have to, like look like you're naturally doing it sort of okay I, I guess and I you kind of have to get used to it the first because the props department had to get me a whole bunch of them to practice with so i would just have to stand outside of the theater and basically chain smoke them until i got you know was able to not get into a coughing fit every time i did it that's a weird thing about smoking is you actually have to like get used to it there was like an anti-smoking yeah. commercial i remember where like the 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 kid coughs or whatever and the, toba- the evil tobacco company is like yeah you'll get used to that but it, it is kind of true <laughs> yeah. you know you know like yeah it, and as I was doing is like I feel like I'm getting used to this but I don't I'm not comfortable with that it's funny because um, smoking has been really vilified um, now nowadays mm-hmm. you know what I mean like you're kind of considered disgusting if you do it and yeah well I'm, it's that's gotten to the point where it's been banned in most most bars now. It, and you think a bar is one of the natural places where you do that. You'd think so, right? Well, yeah. no, uh, it's funny because I remember, and it kind of ties into something I'm doing recently, but um, in, in my Metroid Prime Let's Play, um, I was quitting smoking, but uh, I, I I lit up during um, the phase on mines with Blister and Mr. Sonobozu, mm-hmm. and someone caught it. You know, they heard me lighting up on audio, and they are like, that's it, I don't want to watch the Let's Play anymore. <laughs> no, like, it's too appealing. No, no, no. They were like because they thought smoking was so disgusting, you know. Oh. And I remember a couple of smokers in the thread defended me, like oh, whatever. I, no, you know the thing is though, smoking, and I <laughs> this is not on our agenda or anything. You really don't expect to get addicted because you don't really know what that is until you're in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And to be fair to that poster, secondhand smoke is the absolute worst when it comes into your ears. <laughs> It's where it's at its that. most deadly. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I would. I, I think. I think the one thing is, I think you know, have a little pity towards smoke because you, when you smoke, you, you really don't get that whole notion of like, uh, I'm my brain's being hacked with the reward center, and I'm like totally yeah. into this. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. I kind of had to train myself to be more tolerant of smokers because I grew up in a very intolerant, as far as smoking goes, household. Like. When we would do 4th of July celebrations in the neighborhood, anytime someone smoked near us, my dad would be like, hey, could you please put that thing out? And, you know, just really being kind of a jerk about it. And then I kind of had to be like, you know, well, I was, like I was becoming that way a little bit. It's, it's it's like a weird thing. It's not like a person littering. It's like it, it is a sort of biological um, or actually physiological or, you know, what's what I'm looking for here, mental kind of mm-hmm. need for it, you know what I mean? So, yeah. I have, like, sometimes, like, now, even, like, someone will blow smoke in my face, and I'm like, oh, what an asshole, but then, yeah, I kind of have to think, like, you know what, they don't mean to do it, it's just the sort of thing, you know? They blew it directly into your face? Not on purpose, you know, but whatever. Um, and that was how you met your wife. Look, this is what happens. When you smoke, your health drain, your health meter drains a little bit by bit or whatever, you know? Yeah, so. but you can see lasers. Exactly. So it has some benefits. It's funny, though, you know, a lot of smokers I talk to um, just all agree, like, if lung cancer were cured tomorrow, we'd all go back. 
<laughs> like, nah, who cares about the fucking, your breath or whatever. It's just, you know. What about what it does to you physically, though? Because you see some smokers who have been smoking, they're like 60 years old, and they just look leathery, haggardy. It's, I mean, there it's, are some physical effects. It's partly genetic, though, too. Um, is? Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, you hear about, like, people, like, getting cancer early and later and all that stuff and looking or whatever. You know, I, I don't know. I think smoking, smoking's always a bad thing. You shouldn't do it or whatever, so, but I didn't have a point here. So but if you do get lung cancer, Breaking Bad shows you how to cope with it. <laughs> that is the best way to cope with it. Absolutely. Let's move on to happier topics. So. Anyway, that's been the PSA portion of the podcast. <laughs> this is PAX Week! Yay! And we're going for the second time in a row. I know. Well, you've been to... Just... I've been to two PAXs. I went to the Seattle one and the Boston one, which you were also at. I was only at one, so this is the first time... Retsu... Well, us we're together again for uh, <laughs> yes for another one. Um, I'm really I'm excited to go, honestly. Yeah, we had a blast last year. It was a lot of fun, honestly, yeah. And I think now that we have a bit of a better feel for the uh, layout of the place... From experience, we'll have a more efficient time as well. I think if um, if you're if you want to meet up and say hi or whatever, classic console room is probably the way to go. Mm -hmm. But um, follow us on Twitter; we'll totally tweet where we are and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. We were we're planning to pa uh, to podcast from there, right? Yeah, we were going to try to find a. Well, we're not cool enough to have a, our own panel, and we didn't sign up for one either. So. Not that they would give us one. But anyway, yeah, we'll, we could, we'll go to find a corner somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. What's the, what's the worst they can do? Tell us to leave? Kick us out? I mean, alright, that would be pretty bad. But yeah. you, still, you know. And, well, you, yeah. Fuck them, we're anti-establishment. We're mm -hmm. punk. But I'm of course, we'll politely acquiesce and leave if they do. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah I mean, that's kind of how you have to. I mean, <laughs> we're passive-aggressive about it. We're not confrontational. We're nerds, man. When I say video punk, I mean punk. it in the lightest way possible. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Now, um... Lots of, uh, lots of panels mm -hmm. happening at this PAX. More, I got more overwhelmed, I remember, than last year, kind of figuring out which ones... Well, I f felt like I had to categorize it. Which panels do I want to unironically attend, and which ones might I want to ironically attend? Yeah, right? It's it's tricky. I'm pulling up Guidebook right now for it, and I'm... I don't know. Like, uh... I have five I'm signed up to, you know? Yeah. Yeah, there's, uh, there's of course, Proton John's panel, which is coming back again. That's a given. Mm-hmm. I... I have a feeling it'll be better than it went last year. <laughs> now, now the bar is mighty high. I have a feeling there's some number out there greater than negative 100,000. No. Yeah. No. Um, no well, we're there to support him. <laughs> no, absolutely we are, yes. But I swear, John, if you do a Battletoads thing, I will end you. He's a friend of the show. Um, He's a friend of the show. I, I, I kind of want to attend the uh, TGS podcast show. Just That's um, that network with... Um, the, the the dudes total biscuit and the total biscuit cicada and this is embarrassing one other guy I could look up right now but you're starting to cozy up to that biscuit feller ain't you well you know no actually um it's funny because uh he skyped me the one day and we were just talking about stuff which I'm actually not allowed to bring up due to his partner contract. Oh my god. So anyway, here's everything I heard from you. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, it, it's a weird thing because if you're par apparently with the big big partners, and I, I'm assuming our partner is the same way, but um, uh, if you're partnered, you shouldn't disparage people on the same channel. Yeah, it wasn't that kind of part of the contract? I guess it was. I don't remember signing anything like that personally. But full screen, our partner is not one of the big partners, so yeah. no. who gives a shit? No, they're they're pretty hands off about everything. I like them personally; they're nice to us. Mm -hmm. Whatever. So there's a panel called Nerdcore Hip Hop Rising Up. Yeah, I won't be attending that. No, so um, that's a pass. What does that mean? Don't even exactly? want to ironic. I I don't even know. What is nerdcore? It's really really specific pornography, I think. <laughs> If you're really, like, nerdcore, you're, like, jerking off to, like, Taylor series and Square Roots and things like that, or... Okay, so the way I understand it is nerdcore is a subgenre of hip-hop music. <laughs> so it's catered, the lyrics and music, I guess, is catered to the video game crowd. All right. So I'm looking up a definition, it says, though it can appeal to others as well. 
<laughs> if you say so. I. What others? Oh, <laughs> we're inclusive of dorks and geeks as well. They don't have uh, dork core uh, or spaz core, but we're getting there. Um, I'm looking at the schedule right now. Uh, the first one I see, though, is Ask Us Anything, successful and upcoming indie game companies. Like, really anything? Because I can think of quite a few things I'd like to ask them. I mean, do you know everything? I... If, <laughs> well, so much to ask. If, if you're going to ask, be asked anything, I would freaking hope so. There are lots of tournaments happening at PAX, as always. Like? So you got your Star Foxes, Star Fox 64 specifically, your Mario Karts, is, Smash Brothers. Is Star, so is Star Fox 64 really such a competitive game? I, I, I didn't think so. The multiplayer was pretty, I don't know, pretty milk toast. I thought. Mm. But, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, I do remember the multiplayer. I mean, you just kind of have to do a lot of somersaults and then wait until someone locks onto a bomb with you or something. Can I actually and, tell you, know? you a funny story about Star Fox 64 multiplayer? I thought you'd never ask. No, this is true, too. It's, it's, it's so weird how that came up. Um, when I was in college, right, um, Nintendo 64, my sophomore year, was kind of big. or Not big, but you know what I mean? It was like its heyday kind of thing, right? Right. Um, there were these two dudes um, who I'll change their names and say Chris and Kevin. Oh, whoops, I their names. Um, and Chris was totally like this kind of uptight sort of guy. And whenever you'd play a video game with him, he would do this thing where he's like, oh, I'm kicking your ass so bad. And like That's kind of... Those guys? Yeah. And his, his roommate Kevin knew nothing about fucking video games, right? And one day they were playing Star Fox 64 multiplayer, and Chris got so invested with it and was beating him so bad, I actually like surreptitiously took the controller from Kevin and started playing for him and winning. <laughs> and Chris had no freaking idea. He's like, where'd you learn how to do this stuff? And Kevin's just like, I don't know. I, I think I'm just getting the hang of this and shit. <laughs> so that was my that was my nerdiest prank. It was a nerd. So you're the prank. video game you're the video game Cyrano. <laughs> More or less, yes. You wouldn't know it from watching some of some of my gameplay, but Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you have been uploading your Metroid Prime stuff back to YouTube. I have. Letting people relive some painful memories. It's funny. Um, everybody was very happy with Prime and not so happy with Echoes in the upload. Well, process. I think people didn't like how you were so negative on the game. You know, um, and I'm really not pandering. I, 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 I just swear I really think this. Um, I think, thinking back on Echoes, if you're kind of more aware of how it works, it probably is a better experience. But um, from a blind perspective... I think, and this isn't really just me, like, other, when I did the thread on something awful, and um, other people would kind of echo my, <laughs> so to speak, my sentiment, which was like, eh. well, your notion is, like, in the dark world, right? You step out of your safe zone, and you start, like, draining health immediately. Right. And then you go back to the light crystal, and you start getting it back slowly. Right. And Echoes players who like the game typically point out, you're not really supposed to do that. You go back to the Light Crystal so you don't die as quickly. Yeah, but if you go in the right path, you shouldn't have to stop and start so much. Well, not just that, but if you destroy crates, you get your energy back a lot faster. Ah, right, that too. Right, right, right. And the notion is, like, if you don't rely on the Light Crystals to restore your health and you just do the crates, you, things go a lot faster. But I didn't realize that. And apparently, though, again, from people posting in the thread, I realized, like, a lot of people don't realize that. I just think it was kind of a usability issue where you don't quite realize. Because if you're watching, an interesting thing Echoes does is the AI changes what you get out of the crates depending on what you need. Oh, that's true with the light and dark ammo? Yeah, exactly. Like, right. if you're low on ammo, you get ammo. If you're low on health, you get health. You know? Hmm. So if you know that going in and you say, like, I went down the wrong path, I'm going to retreat to a light crystal, but I'll blow up that box and get health immediately, you're fine. But when you don't know that, you feel like... Because it's kind of like a natural thing. If I stand here and gain health, I should stand here and gain health. But it like slows down the whole thing and makes it seem like a more boring experience. Remember the gif that person made where Samus was walking away and she gave him the finger? Yes, that was awesome. Best part of the thread. My really, favorite. it was. That redeemed the whole Echo thread. Yeah, yeah. We'll post that somewhere. <laughs> I know, I mean, yeah. I mean, I know people don't... I think it's just, like, a kind of general thing. Like, you get video game fanboys, and they, you know, when people diss the game or whatever, they don't like it, so I don't know. Well, that's what we learned on the internet. People take things that they are fans of very, very seriously. I know. It's crazy. Very seriously. Do you mind if I cut topics a bit? Yeah. Um, one of the things that was sort of interesting is uh, that guy, Total Biscuit, who we talked about earlier, um, put out a, a vlog for thanks for a million subs. He hit a million or whatever, you know. Um, and mentioned, though, he's like... 
Um, and he thinly veiled attacked someone who I was happy that he attacked um, about fandoms and things like that and how weird it is, you know? Right. It is weird. It is. No, and it's interesting because he, um, he brought up, like, you know, they doesn't think it's healthy and such. And not to keep bringing this up, but um, I talked to Jesse Cox, a.k.a. OMFG Kata, recently. Do you remember the guy who um, he did I Want to Be the Guy Gaiden? And yeah. 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 I, I made fun of his video, and I kind of, like, did a dry sort of read of all his jokes, basically. Oh, yeah. I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and apparently, well, we talked a bit, because I heard he was, like, a little... He, like, he acted cool about it, but apparently he wasn't too happy with what happened. So I, 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 direct, I messaged him about it, and I'm like, hey, listen, just so you know, there was no little intent, nothing like that. And he was like, no, 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 you know, it wasn't the video. I thought that was funny. It was just, like, a bunch of your fans, like, messaged me, and, yeah. you know, it's like, you know, told me I, I sucked and shit. And it's like, all right. And that gets back into, I mean, I won't belabor the point, but, you know, that's... Mm -hmm. But anyway, I mean, you know, like I told him, you know, like, I, we've said something, and I hope things are cool now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You're going to try to bump into him at PAX, right? Actually, I am. And it's funny, because before this podcast, by the way, I asked you to direct all these topics, and now I feel like I'm switching them a whole lot. But can I tell you one of the panels Jesse Cox is doing? Yes. The Navigator Awards. Yeah, unfortunately, I won't be able to see that one because I'll be gone by then. It's one of the later ones on Sunday. But... I know. I got to convince my wife I'm coming home Sunday night. Um, yeah. It's uh, yeah, because it's like at five o'clock. But apparently, Navigator's um, award ceremony is the topic of a PAX panel. And well, I but what what are they awarding? I don't know. I actually wrote up a whole friggin' Tumblr post about this thing because I I don't. Yeah. Is it like an ironic award show where they try to do funny things? Well, here's the thing. Navigator is one of our more requested, you know, uh, video series to continue, you know? Yeah. I've always been of the opinion that we kind of exhausted the material that we could give that series. The thing I wrote specifically was that you're kind of just refusing to do it, and I'm more recalcitrant. We're yeah. like, I'm not, I'm not against revisiting it per se. It's just that I agree with you, though, that we've... I just don't know what we would get out of it since... I think the central problem we talked about is I, I don't get Navigator. Yeah, yeah, I don't understand. Is it a silly thing? Is it trying to be meta? So for those... There's the whole George Wood is dead thing, but, you know, not really. Like, why would they even do that? So, 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 so for some backstory, in case you haven't ever seen these videos. Um, one day... Uh, you, me, and uh, Proteus were just doing random Let's Play videos for Retsu Prey, you know, just searching them on YouTube the old-fashioned way. And uh, I, I think, I, I don't know if it, I remember if it was me or whoever, but one of us stumbled on these game reviews by uh, a YouTube channel named Navigator, and that's N-A-V-G-T-R. And it, it was this guy named George Wood. He narrates the whole thing, and he has these really strange and extreme views on 90s video games. And uh, there's a lot of these one-liners that just come from fucking nowhere. Yeah. Like, GoldenEye was apparently a terrible game, according to Navigator. Or the, the Tomb Raider thing. I was... Yeah, that's... That one is crazy. He, he And he legit suggests, you know, maybe Lara Croft getting breast cancer would help shake up the series. And in the same video, he refers to her boobs as front-loaded anvils, which is a metaphor I just don't understand. Yeah. I mean, I use it all the time now. I mean, yeah, no, absolutely. My... No, boobs are shaped like anvils, so why wouldn't you? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's just a strange series of videos. And at the beginning, we made fun of it at face value because they were so crazy. Yeah, and they were made... I, I think they were made a very long time ago also. Right. It's kind of like the whole 90s weird video game videos that are just a thing. So we thought that fell into that category. Right. We stopped doing it after, I think, nine to ten videos. I, I forget yeah. the exact number. Yeah, um, we did a lot of them. Yeah, we did a lot of them because they were funny and weird. Um, but then Navigator posted a video and he, he mentioned they mentioned us in a description, which was like, oh, Retsu Prey is making funny videos about us. I don't think they quite get the joke, but okay. Which was... And I think on their channel, it may not be there anymore, but on their channel, they had us in their little related channels section of their yeah, channel. Yeah, it was, it was totally weird. So, um, it turns out, we got mentioned on Cracked.com for it, too, by the way. So, what happened was, this is apparently these Gaming in the Clinton Years reviews that Navigator had done with George Wood as the spokesperson of it. Um, 
They were a rebroadcast of a 90s public access show called Flights of Fantasy. So, Navigator itself, if you ever look at their website and such, they, I, I forget the actual acronym, but they, they provide awards to video game developers and they claim to be within the trade. Like they're somehow in the game industry giving out awards. So I don't know if they're uploading these videos to be ironic or not, right? But the more confusing thing is then, they came out with an announcement that George Wood, the guy doing the videos that we made fun of, died in 2006. And then they have these like sketches where they dig up his body and reanimate it into a puppet. And then someone else, the Cracked Article author, found footage of George Wood talking about Obama as a president. So it, it ends up being this like confusing fucking thing. And now that I found out there, there's a panel about the Navigator Awards, and from what I can tell, a serious one. I'm just flabbergasted by the whole thing. I, I don't understand. Yeah. So short answer: we're too confused to make fun of it anymore. That's the problem. Like I can't tell. Like I, if you want to know my honest opinion, I just don't think they really know what they're doing. Yeah. Like it, it's a derailed train. I think the old videos themselves are. I, I guess legit. It's the stuff that after the fact that happened that I'm really confused on. I I know. I I can't tell if it's like something that like someone who didn't really play video games decided to make and that I should be taking this as face value from a bad video game reviewer, or they were do they were being contrarian on purpose to 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 like I don't know get more views or get more viewers or what have you. It's just a very odd thing. So I'm I'm interested to I'm interested to see the panel. Um, I think it's all a new Samuel Beckett play. I would hope so. It has to be. Spoiler alert, though. I did talk. Like I guess that I talked to um, OMF Chikata about it, and apparently Navigator did just ask people at PAX who have press passes, like, "Hey, do you want to join this panel?" And he was just like, "Yeah, sure." Yeah. Was it like moderating the panel? Well, yeah, no. So how do you how do you moderate? You just give out awards, right? I no. You talk about who's going to get the awards. I think. Right. This is going to be bigger than the Oscars. I think so. It has to be. Yeah. So anyway, but if you're uh, if you're going to PAX and want to go there, and we can't, and you can report on that for us. It's at four thirty at the Phoenix Theater on Sunday. <laughs> I uh yeah. And, By the uh, way, can, this is also an open open invitation to George Wood to join us on our podcast. Actually, I, I would I would definitely like to talk to George Wood, you know. Who so is, if you if you know, know George Wood or he is your grandfather, uh, let him know. In any case, you've been skimming. He is not dead. He is absolutely, yeah. as far as I know, absolutely alive. At least as as of two thousand eight. Are the videos where he's on this kind of who wants to be a, or doing this who wants to be a millionaire oh. style show? Are those more recent? Um, those I don't know. Um, the show you're talking about, the title is "Who Wants to See My Derriere." Oh, okay. It is an actual. It's for real. I think it's. It seems like a public access show with high school kids where you answer a bunch of video game and other related questions, and if you get like ten in a row right, a la millionaire, you George Wood shows you his ass. And I remember there's a caption even on episode fifteen that says, contrary to popular popular belief, George Wood is not a child molester. Um, they go behind. Uh... They go behind a screen to do it, which leads me to believe that he's not really showing them his ass. I I would hope. So, I don't um, know. The only other theory I have with Navigator is that there's like an Andy Kaufman, Bob Zamuda thing going. Really? Well, again, it's a theory. I don't buy into it. Uh, I don't know if... You know, like Andy Kaufman, if if you ever seen the movie Man in the Moon with Jim Carrey, very good movie. Mm. But it was about a comedian. Uh, did you see it? Uh, no. Do you know about Andy Kaufman? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I know yeah. the background and everything. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's a very good movie, by the way. But yeah, he was a comedian who marched to the beat of his own drummer, and he didn't care if other people found what he did funny, and most people didn't, actually. He was sort of yep. appreciated after he died. Yeah, no, he... Uh, it was that sort of thing. The only thing is, I will say, Andy Kaufman was legitimately funny, whereas George Wood, I mean, he's like, play it loud in stereo, dude. Like, is that ironic, or...? Well, like you said, Andy Kaufman wasn't appreciated until he was gone. No, but, like, some of his... Yeah. 
So <laughs> maybe this is where video game reviews will go after he's gone. Maybe he is the Andy Kaufman of video game reviewers, and I mm-hmm. am just the fool not getting it. Or the more I hear about this, the more I feel like it's more like the David Lynch. <laughs> but I feel like you know what it is. I feel like if if I got confirmation somehow that this is all a big joke and I'm not in on it, I will just concede. Like, yeah, okay, fine, you got me. Yeah. I wasn't in on it. I don't know. Which, by the way, could bring me to another topic if you like. Go ahead. Um, so, Captain, <laughs> I'm sorry about this. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I really did ask you. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, no. So we had Red Sea Blitz ended recently. Yeah, about a couple weeks now. Yep. Yeah, three um, weeks. Three videos a day for the month of February. Yeah, so this was your idea. And yes. And it, it actually started while I was away, and you just did a shitload of stuff with Chip and uh, Ironicus. But you just felt like, hey, upload them all at once, why not? Yeah, and then I'm like, uh, you know, well, why don't we give it a shot, you know? And why don't, I would rather we keep it up. You know, I can't lie, it was it was not easy. Yeah, not to say, like, poor us or anything, but, um, well, it was kind of an experiment to see what people who make mm-hmm. a living off of YouTube who kind of have to, I'm assuming they have to upload that many videos a day to, you know, like, put food on the table or whatever. Yeah, it's weird because, yeah, you do have to kind of make Retsu Prey um, a priority in your life. Right. Like yeah, and so there were times where both of us would be at work and we'd be like, hey, you want to knock out a couple of videos? Yeah, it's, yeah, you have to, like, be, you have to, like, schedule things around it. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to say it like, yeah, like you said, like, oh, for us or anything like that, I, but I do mean it to say, um, you know, it, you know what the one thing I want to get across is, I didn't, I don't think either of us wanted to do a thing where we kicked out three videos a day just because. Exactly, yeah, we wanted the content to still be, uh, yeah. I don't know, to meet our nebulous quality standards. I'm not going to say that everything was a hit. I know the DuckTales video was kind of, people were like, eh, it's not so bad. And Yeah, yeah, like there that. were a couple like that. Right. But, I, I mean, we really did reject a bunch of videos out of that. And we wound up removing a couple where the person, we mentioned this already in the last one, I think, but uh, yeah. the person asked us nicely and in a logical way. Said, right, okay, right, yeah. Sure. Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, one of the misfires, by the way, which I, uh, I was, the, brought up this topic was apparently we did a, or Chip and I did a video of a Phoenix Wright game played by a user named Critical with a, with a one. Um, so I, I, I moderate Let's Play. I have to watch, I have to, but you know, I, I watch a lot of Let's Plays from the Something Awful forums and such. I'm not big on people who do YouTube. So for me, I've seen worse YouTube videos of people legitimately trying to do Let's Plays. So when I encountered this guy who did a, apparently a purposefully bad Let's Play, and whose ad revenue goes to charity. I didn't know any of that, you know. So me and, and, and once people pointed it out, I took it down immediately and replaced it with another one we had in the backlog, you know, and such. Um, yeah, so I know I, people got upset over that, which I, I don't... I, I that's well, that's kind of silly. I think it's an overreaction. I, I really yeah. do. An Not overreaction even, on the internet? I know, you right? On, on internet.com? I know. No, um... You, you you know, yeah, again, like, it's a video that was up for 10 minutes, and it's one that I even missed the joke. And I, I'm not even going to blame Cheese in there, because a couple times in the video, he mentioned, he said something like, is this a joke? You know what I mean? Like, I think yeah. he was more clued in than I was. But, um, I don't know, I, I don't think it's really a big deal, but I don't know. No, I mean, why, why should it be? I don't know. The internet. Everything's a big deal. True. Absolutely. In a place where people have ironic, unironic fandoms of stuff, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. There are no limits. I, you know, uh, I think I, I think the high points for me was everything by Mage Knight. All two videos by Mage Knight four hundred four. Yes, that was, that was awesome. Yeah, it was even better because it seemed like you know Mage Knight uh, liked both of the videos we did of him, and it oh, seemed absolutely. like he was kind of on the on the up and up since he had made those. Because you mentioned that they were a long time ago, and absolutely, yeah. And, so, uh, I'm a, I, I like it. Those are my favorite reactions from people is when they come and say, this is great, guys. Absolutely. And yeah. actually, um, Immortal HD Films, who mentioned he wants to meet, wants to meet us at PAX, um, uh, he does the Azura's Wrath Let's Play that we that me, Chip, and Ironicus did. Oh, uh, yes. No, he's going there, so he wants. Well, so I'm happy to meet up with him. All right. Well, you have to get Chip and Ironicus tickets then before it's too late. Well, it's too late, so fuck them. No, oh, okay. Whatever. Now, um... Wait, what did you think about Retsu Blitz? Um, it was an interesting experiment. I think um, it had, 
I think I'd like to try it again. Maybe not in the same capacity of three a day, but... Maybe five a day. Five a day, right. Yeah, for five months. Right, right, right. Uh, I mean, it's it's a tricky thing. I don't know. One part of it was I felt more reluctant to say that I didn't think a video went well because of the constraints of time mm -hmm. that we were under at times. But even then, we still you know mutually agreed a couple of times like, yeah, this one didn't turn out so great. Let's scrap it. Yeah, like we scrapped Crime Patrol too because that went on. Yeah. That yeah. was a 30-minute one, right? Yeah, it was about 30 minutes, and we thought Crime Patrol 1 went really well, but then Crime Patrol 2 was just... Somehow just more repetitive and bland. Yeah. Well, you know what it is? I mean, I know 30 minutes uh, doesn't sound like a lot, but, you know, when you have a full-time job and you have, like, you know, shit you got at home and, you know, all that stuff, it's like, it sucks to just lose that time. You know what I mean? All right. And this gets me to something I'd like to ask you. Okay. Because, you know, I don't really feel like I'm in a place to say, like, oh, Red Suplets took up a lot of time, but you are, A, married... Uh -huh. B, you're in grad school, uh -huh. getting uh, working towards an MBA. Yep. Yeah. And you live in the place where you have to commute for, like, what, hour, hour and a half? Not that long. Like, maybe about an hour tops if there's traffic. An hour tops. You're a busy fellow, man. I try to be. How, how do you make up the time for all these things and keep everything happy? Can I, I'll, I will tell you one thing. Um, when you do something you really like to do... And uh, Let's Play and Retsu Prey is, is that, although I haven't done a Let's Play in a while, and I'll just talk about that in a bit. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, you, you, you do your best to find the time. Um, for me, I, I kind of like to burn the candle at both ends, you know, which isn't a great way to live. But, like, in addition to all that stuff, like, my wife and I are actually working on a couple of apps, like iPhone apps that we want to release, you know. It... it, it it's tough. It's you. You really have to do whatever you can to find the time. So you yeah. buy into that New York lifestyle, always on the go. I kind of prefer it that way. You know, don't get me wrong. I, I'm I'm not I'm a lazy person at times, but like, uh, <laughs> see, I'm know. very much the opposite. I'm very much adopt the Southern mentality of just kind of that's something, laid back, keep it slow. Something no I've been big deal, to talk no rush. to you about actually. Uh -oh. No, um, <laughs> no, you know, you know what it is. It's like, um. I'm I'm actually thinking ahead a little, you know, because my wife and I are talking about having kids and stuff, you know, and oh, we're at, we're trying to buy a house right now, you know, and it, it's funny because I have a room picked out that I could do videos in and things like that, you know. <laughs> no, I, you ask the realtor. There, what are the acoustics like in this room if I were to wear a headset? Well, the previous owners, it was their gun room. Actually, the gun room. Yeah, they have these huge safes where you put like guns. That's what I call my gym. <laughs> they have like all NRA stuff up there, you know. Um, and they, they have a gun room. I, I, I didn't. I mean, as as a person who's not a gun person, I didn't know that was a thing. But you know, apparently people have gun rooms. But I was just like, it's a little offshoot of the basement, and I'm like, hey, you know what? Like, <laughs> offshoot. I get it. <laughs> really nice. Exactly. Oh, I didn't even realize. Ah. No, I've, I've talked to my wife about it. I mean, Red Supre is, 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 for whatever reason, something I'm, I really like doing. So, you, know, you know what it is? Um, this is a little weird for me. Um, and I've talked about it on Tumblr and things like that. Let's Play is something I feel like I have a lot invested in. Um, meaning that, like, there is the notion of the first video Let's Play and all that stuff. I'm, I'm you kind of helped get that ball rolling. Well, like, yeah. And I feel like it got kind of co-opted, if you wanted the truth, you know? By YouTube and stuff like that. Yeah. But R Retsu Prey, I feel like, is something that's firmly ours. You know what I mean? Mm, I know there's there's, other... there's not much like it out there, as far as the video game. There's, no, there's no question. Like, I, you know, I mean, there's a, it's a term that we coined, and it's like just something that's... It's like, I, I like that better because it's something where I don't have to feel like I'm apologizing for something. <laughs> right. No, it, it all, like, it's a weird thing. Like The way I sell Let's Play is I say, like, oh, I helped start an obnoxious YouTube trend. Honestly, I, re I really did. You know what I mean? Like okay. When I talk to people about it and stuff. And I really do feel like it got it's gotten a little obnoxious at times, you know? Mm. But Resident Evil is just something that's just like, yeah, you know, we do it. It's funny. And it's it's something that is kind of ours in a way, you know? Mm -hmm. And has been for quite some time. Exactly, yeah. And I don't mind when other people do it. Please don't get me wrong. Mm. But, you know... But do it well. <laughs> or not or whatever, but, you know. Whatever. Or we'll find you. 
No, I mean, but again, like, and I wrote this on Tumblr, you know, I didn't coin the term Let's Play, there's sort of a dubious sort of where did it start kind of thing, you know. I, I'm just saying that, like, Retsu Prey is something I like to lock on and focus on more because it's, you know, pretty clearly... Does that make sense? I don't know. I think so. Look, yeah. we accept your apology. I understand. I'm sorry. It's, it's okay. So, Let's Plays, you said, you want to start getting into some more? I would like to. You know, um, uploading, re-uploading Metroid Prime... I, I know it was a blind let's play, and I usually don't like those, but the one thing I do like is the rotating guest concept, uh, and I would like to do another blind, possibly blind let's play with rotating guests, you know? The, like, semi, the semi-blind formula where the guest knows their shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Or, you know, Frank, yeah, exactly. I think that's a working formula. Yeah. I think it works best, and, and this is something we do in the wrong praise, too, because typically... I think I know what's going on, and you don't. And in your Let's Play Mario Galaxy videos, it's the opposite. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think that whole, like, one person in the know, one person not in the know is a fine formula, and that's where you should go with. And then having a rotating guest of a third person in or out of the know kind of just works fine. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, you just have disparate points of view contributing to a common thing. Absolutely. And that enriches the experience for everyone. Yeah. And I don't want to do a blind let's play because I'm lazy. I would like to do one just because I think I think it can work. It depends on the game, though. It's the problem. You know what I mean? So you, are you in a place where you want to find the right game right now, or do you have something in mind? I don't... I have things in mind, but I, I don't know. Um... Games put, you have that you haven't started playing yet that maybe you're like, this could be a good way to start playing it. I'll put it this way. I, I stumbled on Super Metroid back in the day, and it works because if you're trying to 100% Super Metroid, you can get a lot of energy tanks missiles early on, and you're kind of overpowered for the rest of it. Right. So if you're doing it blind, you're probably not apt to die a lot and have to repeat content, you know? Okay. Metroid Prime mostly was like that, although I had some issues with the phase on mines. You know? Mm hmm Um, so I feel like a game where I don't want to say it's easy, but if there are paths you can take that you're not, comp you know, that you're, if, with a little bit of intuition and whatever, you'd be okay with could work. You know what I mean? Okay. Leave your suggestions. Yeah, no, absolutely. Order. Please do, absolutely. Yeah. You know what I was even considering, actually, is I've been playing that Walking Dead game a bunch, and I like that a lot. I don't think that's i don't know that nah, doesn't it seem work. like a game that any sort of let's play approach would work well on i just i, I just kind of felt like at the very least you can't really lose that and repeat content too much no no, no i i wouldn't seriously consider walking dead i just thought of it now as part of the criteria i mentioned but yeah, um it's such a good game though it really is i'm only on it did you finish two. it oh you know, two okay I've been, like, studying for accounting and stuff, you know, but, um... Well, you said you like to keep yourself busy, so... I try. It's better get on that thing before spoilers catch up to you. Hectic. Um, no, I, um... I was considering one of the Zeldas, like, Twilight Princess or Skyward Sword, which I haven't played. Mm -hmm. That could be good. Well, I feel like, um... um if, I, if it's anything like Ocarina of Time, as long as you have someone to keep track of where you need to go in the dungeon next, it might not be so bad. You ever worry about running out of things to talk about, though? I guess it wasn't an issue with Prime, and atmospherically, the games are kind of similar. I feel like, though, I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like it just depends. It's like, I mean, we do this podcast. We don't have a fucking great agenda. Thanks. Mm -hmm. No, I'm kidding. Mm -hmm. uh, no. <laughs> um, it, it, I don't think finding things to talk about are all right, or a problem. I just feel like it's more about... Maybe it's not running out of things to talk about more... Um, dry spells in the gameplay itself. That's the big issue, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The the big example I always go to, and I feel bad about this, because he's a great Let's Player, is Psychedelic Eyeball. And by the way, um, if you're not watching, he is doing an excellent System Shock 2 Let's Play right now. Oh, I need to start watching that. You should. It's it's yeah. amazing. Um, I've never played System Shock 2, and he he's taking one of the harder paths, but explaining why it's the harder path. It's kind of like something appealable to both people who've played it and people who haven't, I feel. Hmm. Um, but um, Psych ran into it in... Oh, God, I'm blanking on the name. He used to do Prince of Persia. It was a game... Blackthorn. Um, and Blackthorn was sort of a modern take on Prince of Persia, where you'd like shoot orcs with shotguns and things like that. Right. Like one of those rotoscope kind of games. But Psychedelic uh, forgot that the game gets kind of repetitive at one point, and it yeah. mostly turns into a 2D cover shooter. And you have to like, rely on gimmicks and things like that. And I think that's a big issue with Let's Play in general, is that 
Sometimes the, you need the game to help help you. You know what I mean? That's the problem I have in Galaxy sometimes, too, is even though the mechanics of levels change a lot, they're still, I mean, the core concepts are all pretty similar, so... Really? It gets to a point like, well, I mean, what's what new? What's there new to say about the game? It's funny you should say that, because I felt like Galaxy kind of did its best to switch things up. And it did. Yeah. But and... it's not like Mario's doing things too substantially different level to level. I mean, you're jumping, getting from A to B. That's fair. I, I think you're, you're doing it in different ways, but it's not they're not so substantially different that you can go on this long explanation of here's how these mechanics work here and here's some funny things about those mechanics to contribute to the humor of the LP, you know. Right, yeah. yeah. You know, it's funny I kind of ran into that um cuz I did a test post of I have no mouth and I must scream. Yeah. I remember that. I felt like it would be a funny sort of dichotomy to your let's play of Super Mario Galaxy which is like the happiest game ever. <laughs> you know. But um, it, it wasn't very well received, and I actually think that is part of the problem, is when you play adventure games sort of in general, as much as the game tries to switch it up, it's still kind of samey, you know? Yeah. I mean, video games weren't made with the intent of being Let's Played. No, 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 not at all. So, right? I mean, the, the, the onus is on you to figure out how to get around that. You know what's funny is, though, I, I really feel like Dead to Rights um, was... Well, like a good choice for a let's play because story wise they, they exactly can, yeah they switch yeah. things up a lot actually no but the first one not retribution yeah you i know. think the same things could be said for most of the long plays that we've talked over mm -hmm. is there the I mean, well not all but the really the good ones i think the best ones have this core story driven component to them in right. addition to whatever action's going on so that in itself fuels uh, commentary for you know minutes to come. Absolutely, and I think that's kind of the issue. I feel like with some of the bigger let's players, and the you know the big thing I I brought up is like you know Happy Wheels video after Happy Wheels video, where you <laughs> like it's like you know if if you were a professional comedian like a Dave Chappelle or you know what I mean like somebody who's really fucking funny. Yeah, yeah. A bit has to end at some point. Yeah, you or you pick a game, or if you had to, you you know you pick a thing like that where you say you know what. I don't want to make the same joke over the same material over and over and over again because it's going to get stale. You know what I mean? It's not that not every game can let's be let's played, but it is that you have to give some thought about like how you're going to do it. You know yeah. what I mean? How are you going to make the presentation interesting? Absolutely. In Binding of Isaac Part Two Hundred and Seven. Exactly. Well, it's another reason why I kind of I, I don't like the whole like I want to be the guy let's play thing because that sort of game lends itself to repeated content. Yeah. You're meant you're meant to dial on and. You're meant to but, do the same level over and over. Yeah, and I find that on YouTube. I mean, maybe outside of YouTube too. But the uh, part of repeated content is fueling the co the frustrated commentator, the the trope of the frustrated commentator. You know what it is though. I mean, I think that's kind of a thing where people you laugh at it at first, but it gets old quick. Yeah. Um, I because I remember way back in the day when video let's play started, Kefka Floyd um, was playing Mega Man X. And he, and he had trouble with the Kylo Renette play, and he couldn't jump on a simple platform. <laughs> and he wasn't falling to his death, but he just couldn't make it up a wall. And it was funny at first, because he was like, jump, Mega Man, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Came an inadvertent catchphrase. Right, and it was kind of funny, but then like 20 minutes later, it got kind of, eh. And mm -hmm. then when other people did, you're like, all right, this is getting boring. Yeah, you know? other guests would come in, and then they would say that, and then be like, yeah, okay. Well, let's see, I think the central issue with YouTube Let's Plays is since there's no central repository for things like that, new people come in, and they laugh at that sort of thing, and it seems like a positive thing, so you get people who incorrectly say, I should just keep screwing up, because people find it funny. But the truth of the matter is, it, those people get bored yeah. after a while. That's the problem with YouTube communities is that they're all so insular. There's never any kind of outside influence. Exactly, exactly. It just becomes this, yeah, thing. Mm -hmm. uh, fun fact, that Mega Man X LP was the first LP I ever did commentary for. Was it? Yeah, that was my first video appearance. I did not realize that. Ever. Whoa. Fun fact. Was that really fun, though? I mean, the more you know, right? <laughs> more or less. Can we edit in a little thing? Maybe? Yeah, absolutely. Maybe. Yeah, okay. okay well. yeah. I'll leave it to you. I'm not right. touching this shit. Right. Um, <laughs> hey. Yeah? Breaking news alert. Form Spring is closing. Oh, man. It's shutting down, man. I think we should take up the slack. I think we should do a viewer mail kind of thing. Yeah. Well, we did, we've did. we done that a couple of times on this podcast. Yeah, the podcast is stupid. Nobody listens to a podcast. Well, you know. No. Um, 
No, yeah, it, it, you know, I liked Form Spring. I didn't at first, but it grew on me. I liked it too. I'm, I'm gonna miss it. There's it's... a there's an Ask FM which is similar to Form Spring. Okay. I, I say similar in that it's pretty much identical. In fact. I'm going to do a new video series called Grab Bag, where you mail me presents and I open them on camera oh. while answering your questions, so take mm. that. You should probably pre-screen the presents, though. No, I don't think so. I think well, I mean, do you, do you have a food taster? I would <laughs> hope so. Well, your wife? Mm. Yeah. Yes. Uh. <laughs> Good. 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 But yeah, Form Spring apparently... Uh, could not make enough money to keep the lights on. That's so a shame. They're shutting down at the end of March. I really did like them. It is a shame. It was it was a fun distractor. Absolutely. For me while I was at work or no, uh, right. alone yeah. and crying. You would just yeah, yeah right. You would just jump on and be like, "What's people? What are people asking me right now?" Yeah. What do people want to know? What are the hot topics? Hey, that reminds me. Can I bring up something? Hot topic? Um, sort of. Okay. You know that Conan video I put up? Conan the Barbarian? Yes. Um, I don't want to be Conan the Barbarian. <laughs> no, that was one of the big criticisms. It's like, you were like, hey, like, what the fuck? This is such bullshit. Like, it's like, whoa, whoa it's an old stupid 80s movie. Sylvie, if you're projecting yourself into Arnold, I mean, <gasps> you moderate Let's Play, but... Come on, there's a couple jokes around the big one's the PS4 punchline. Help me out here. I guess I get it in terms of people, other I, I don't know, like, when you're younger, maybe. I don't know. Once you hit 30, you don't want to be any action movie hero. And I just felt like Arnold Schwarzenegger is kind of, a, like, ridiculous. You know what I mean? Okay, Mr. LP Universe. I'm sorry. I just thought it was crazy. <laughs> I just want to set, I just want to set the record straight on that one. Like, like I don't want to be Conan the Barbarian. Wasn't he sold into slavery when he was a child? <laughs> And he just, and like his love interest, he pays for sex with a jewel, and then like, James Earl Jones crucifies him? I could pick better ones. I need to watch that movie again. Nah, you know, really. Yeah, okay, maybe. I covered the best part. <laughs> the best part. <laughs> I just, I mean, I'm sorry, just, I, I don't know, I, 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 I just, it was a funny thing I decided to do. Actually, it was for that Retsu Wards thing, but then I found out it was audio only, so I was like, alright, well, I might as well post it. Oh yeah, the Retsu Wards, that's, uh, in case people don't know, a fan made a survey to gauge what people's favorite, least favorite videos, um, characters, other kinds of stuff were from the, uh, RP universe can i tell you by the way just to tie those two things together general ironicus endorsed both of those and i consider him the end all be all in terms of like endorsing things like if he says it's okay he knows he's smart so like yeah once he was like i'm and once he retweeted the conan video and was like going conan like conan o'brien whatever and um, um the the retsu words thing i'm like these are both good things i have confirmation now Slow beef. Um, just so you know, mm -hmm. General Ironicus. Yeah. Holocaust denier. Whoa. <laughs> so, think about it. I won't. Okay. All right. Right. Anyway, those uh, the guy Retsu running Wards. the Retsu Wards thing. Um, he said he was gonna post the. I don't know how he's doing his presentation. He said he's getting some guests mm -hmm. as well, which cannot be named at this time. No. So, um, yeah, he's running that show, so we'll see what happens. Absolutely. You sound, yeah. Sounds interesting. Looking forward to it. We'll post it when we see it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Wow. Wow. Let's plays, right? <laughs> I'm following a couple. Yeah? Oh, uh, what are they? Um, I'm following um, from Toddy Dot, that's C-O-D-D-Y. He is doing a Let's Play of Azure's Wrath. Um, I don't know if you ever played that game or seen anything from that game. I have not. I'd like to call it God of War on steroids, but that's not really fair. I almost... Is that possible? It somehow is. Oh. Uh, it, it, it's basically... It's almost a joke. It's like they, they take... Well, alright. They take characters from Hindi mythology and extremely liberally interpret them. Starring like, George Wood. Yeah, basically. No, they, they like apparently though it's got like really nothing to do with the religion or anything. 
like Ajira is not even like a god or demigod from Hindi. It's like a demon or a spiritual. There, there's multiple Ajiras basically. You know. Gotcha, gotcha. And it's sort of loosely tied to the seven deadly sins, even though there's eight of them. More or less, it's like it's like we're using some names and things mm. from the religion, but we're not really. So that's matter. why when I go to the bargain bin, I see Ashura's gluttony. Yeah, more or less, exactly. Yeah. Where you're seeing wizens. <laughs> mm. Mm. No, but um, Toddy has an interesting take on the Let's Play, which he has side A and side B videos, where side A is just him, where I think he's Australian, but he, anyway, it doesn't matter. He explains like the gameplay and such, and like just talks about it sort of, not straight laced, like it's your, it, but it's just like a standard Let's Play type of thing. And side B is where he just fucks around with a bunch of guests. So it's okay. kind of. I think so it's he has two versions of each video. Exactly. Yes. Cool. Cool. I would. I would okay. recommend that one. Um, can I recommend another one? Hi, this is Diabetes. You may know me from that thing you were just listening to. I apologize for the abrupt cutoff, but Slow Beef had to abruptly run. One of them marriage things, apparently. <laughs> what a sucker. Anyway, what he was saying before he was cut off was another LP plug, which I will make on his behalf. He was wanting to plug Simply Simon's LP of Mega Man 2 Game Boy Edition, which you can find on the somethingawful.com Let Us Play subforum. I also wanted to plug one old Let's Play that I've been getting into lately. It's Archimp Cola's LP, co-op LP, of Resident Evil 5, which you can find on lparchive.org. Is a hilarious casual playthrough of Resident Evil 5. Very funny guy. And what else do we have here? Oh, I wanted to thank... You may have noticed we had a new intro for this episode. I'd like to thank Joe Roman, who submitted that to us. Thank you, sir. It's very nice. And if you want to submit your own intro, feel free to send it our way. Tweet it at us. Facebook it at us. Pinterest us, though I don't think we'll see it there. But send it to us in whatever way makes most sense for you. If you'd like to, we always love getting content from you guys. So, that's all I got. So, with that being said, see you guys at PAX. Unless you're not going, in which case I apologize for being so presumptuous. I, uh, I'm not good at this podcasting thing. Bye!